Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and I'm starting this a little bit early to try and catch the uh, the fairy right off the bat because there's a very interesting question that a lot of people have been asking, and I mean, I know I've explained it, and I know that I've I've done videos on it and stuff, but I don't think I've I've done it recently enough for all of the new viewers to understand what it is. <clears throat> there is a hole up in the um, the sub. The tro not, not the tropics, it's the savanna. Uh, da, 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 select, go, select, select, yes, confirm, confirm. Um, over there, that um, you guys have been asking about, you're like, there's a hole up in the, the rocks. Well, oh gosh, come on, come on, come on, come on, go, go. I just need to go, just get. Well, it's actually a teleport, and like I, I haven't used it in so long because it's just it's not part of the everyday life of a lumber tycoon too but um, I will show you what it is um, how long how long how long is it gonna take Hoover um, when do you run next 44 seconds okay so I don't know if we can see it from here now we can't see it um, around this corner on the opposite side like here's the bridge I don't know if can you see that yeah there's the bridge, and then once you go around this little corner, on the cliff face, there's a hole in the rock. And a lot of people have said, I've, I've tried getting in there, and I just can't see what it is. Whenever I first started Lumber way back in, in uh, 2015, maybe 14, 16, I don't remember. Whenever I had first started, um, I had seen the hole, and I was trying to figure out how to get to it. And then I remembered that I could get up on top of the rocks just above. This is before the, all the glitches of the flying and the, the other stuff, the stuff that I figured out. Um, I took a gold tree, and I laid it down over the rocks to get up to... This was before long planking. And I got up on top, and I, I looked down, and I jumped off and into that hole. Like, it, it took me at least two, three tries, and it took forever. I mean, I was up all night trying to figure it out. Got in there, couldn't see anything, and, like, I, I didn't know what it was. Well, it wasn't until later on that I figured out that that's... Like, I didn't figure it out. It, it was already known, but I figured out that it was a teleport from inside the maze back over there. So I'm going to show you that. Oh, I guess I can pause. This is, this is going to be a boring ride anyway. Actually, I could just I could talk to you the whole time. I mean, that's that's part of the whole reason that you're here is for the for the talk, for the daily. What was that? Dear Lord, the set is coming apart at the seams. No, sorry. Um, what did I do today? I programmed. I programmed a lot. Um. My boss has got me working on a program. I can't I can't explain anything about it, can I? Oh, it's all proprietary. Dang it. Okay, just know that it uses a lot of jQuery, SQL, and Ajax calls. So I'm I'm programming the back end in Cold Fusion. So it's got CFC functions. So I basically I program in my own API. Um, and that API is used on the page that I'm building, which is in a CFM, it's a cold fusion markup language, which uses Ajax to create dynamic calls on the page. So, basically imagine this. Imagine that you've got a web page, right? And you click save on the page, right? Well, in old school programming, HTML programming, that page has to go out, make a, a request, come back, and refresh the whole page. Well. With Ajax, what I'm allowed to do is I can send a call off to that same uh, function, that same page, and get dynamically back something that I was looking for. So whether it's a, a save to SQL database or whether it's like what, whatever the case may be. If it's saving a file, if it's saving an image, something like that, I can get that call back uh, on the page and not have to refresh everything. So that's, that's what I've been doing today is I've been setting those up to to do some awesomeness for the company. Is it? Does it seem? Ooh. Oh yeah, our, our, our volume is down. That was weird, strange. Or is it this? No, it still, it sounds light. Okay, so anyhow, down here in the cave, 
whenever you go to the right and then you go to the right again there's a <coughs> area up here that turns into like brown walls come on where is uh, I think it's to the left here uh oh uh oh now I done did it Where's it at? Where's it at? There's the brown walls. So this area right here, okay, it may not look it, but that's the same kind of hole that's over there on the other, the other side. Now I have um, OBS, and with OBS I can do something kind of cool, which is the night vision goggles. Um, basically, I just select my Roblox game. Right click, I select filters, and then I can turn on color correction. Just like that. So now, technically, I can see in the dark. Not so much that way, but this way we should be good, so. Um, also, this takes a little bit of practice because um, I, I could never get that the first time. Like, that's definitely some practice. Oh, there we go. That's how, that's how you get up here, okay? Um, I tried for the longest time to try and get up there just by using like wood or something like that. Oh, also, if you go and get blue wood, you can come through here, drop it into this little hole over here, and have your buddy pick it up over in the uh, savannah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump. Beep. There we go. I teleported. You guys might not have seen it, but here is the hole. Ta-da! What? Now notice that I still have the cave music. That's because I haven't registered that I've changed zones. So, boop. You also see it get lighter. The the dark effect is gone. And there I am. I'm over in the in the savannah. Um, let's see. I need to go back into Roblox, go back over to filters, turn off the color correction. Oh, doesn't it look all washed out now? Like what happened to the pretty colors code? That's that's just the filter. That's all. Anyhow, I got a little bit of a, a walk ahead of me, so I can sit here and jabber jaw again. Um, what was I talking about? I was talking about programming. I just got my badge for junior programmer, um, Unity junior programmer, or something like that. I've done 199 um, courses inside the Unity learning application thingy. I highly, highly recommend it. If you guys are interested in programming video games, programming um, Roblox games, or Unity games, Xbox games, whatever the case may be, um, definitely go learn Unity. And if you're not interested in Unity, what about Fortnite? Would you guys like to learn how to program Fortnite? Then go download the Unreal Engine. And then go over to Unreal and look up their tutorials. They've got tons of tutorials on there too. And it's not hard. The, the tutorials that you do are not hard. But here's the problem. A lot of you will associate um, those kind of tutorials with like online learning in your school. Don't. Do not associate it that way. All right? it's, it's something very fun to, and enjoyable to, to learn and to go and do. And even if you don't have like a strong interest in it, I'd still recommend it. Like take four hours, you know? And you don't have to take all four hours at one time. Uh, you don't have to do like I do. I will sit down for five hours at a time at night and just run through tutorials. I will turn the video speeds up to like 1.75 and I've got a speed reader um, on my computer that will read the computer screen, uh, the web page for me. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that I do that you probably shouldn't do um, when learning stuff, but I also, I go through stuff really fast. I get bored really fast. So I know, I know what it's like to try and learn with ADHD. So I, I've just, I found what works for me and what I'm interested in, and I really, really like programming video games. So uh, what I'm really good at is programming applications and databases and, and backends and like web development but I'm getting 
pretty good at programming video games too. <laughs> so, uh. mm. Speaking of programming, if you're interested in programming on Roblox, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, buy my book, the Advanced Roblox Coding Book. It's from uh, Simon and Schuster and um, the Adam from Adams Media, which is a sub subsidiary subsidiary subsidiary. It's a sub subsidiary of um, of them. Oh, and congratulations to the person that figured out the the uh, code. I think I congratulated you already, didn't I? Yeah, I think I did. What was I doing? Um, what did I miss? Oh, the lights! The lights! That's right. The glorious lights. Okay, there's one light I wanted to hook up first and foremost, and that was right over here. I want this up here at the top. Kind of like a little floodlight. Or should I, should I do it down there? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we should do it under the counter. Instead of on top, because that's usually where you'd put like a, a counter light and stuff, right? Oh, I need a, <clears throat> I need to go get some switches. Sorry, it's starting to look like a mess. Ah, home. <laughs> Boop. There we go. Wee. Uh oh, where's the store? Oh, I'm in a different spot. <laughs> That'll teach me. I had a, a, I was watching TikTok and I actually got a little upset at one of the TikToks. Okay, so um, if you guys don't know who Reese, Reese Witherspoon is, um, Legally Blonde and a um, whole, whole bunch of different movies. Anyhow, she, hold on. She did a, a Tiki Talk of um, what I hear when my eight-year-old tries to explain Roblox to me. So I did, I did, I did a response to it when I explain how to program Roblox games to eight-year-olds. <laughs> so I thought it was funny because she's like, like that, and I feel like that's how I, f I, I sound. When I'm trying to explain programming um, to, to to eight year olds, um, I don't know if you're eight years old or if you're watching my videos. Most of you are in between the ages of ten and like fifteen, and then I've got some older audiences who still watch me from the olden days of the, all the tutorials and stuff. Which this should be like refreshing that I actually went and showed something of the past that that uh, that teleport. <laughs> hey Tom. Yes, sir. I, I came in here, but I completely forgot what I was doing. Well, sir, what was the last thing you did? Um, let's see. I put up a light. Oh, switches. Ah, yes, sir. They're on the back counter. Thank, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Completely forgot what I came in here for. I was just. It's always good to talk to yourself and give yourself answers. <sighs> Especially during tests. Uh, not so much on the subway. You don't want to talk to yourself on the subway. Unless you have like an earpiece in and then you can just pretend like you're on the phone. And then people don't bargain you. But that's that's another story. <clears throat> um, I've found that since switching over positions from like help desk to application development analyst, I have cut off a lot of communication to my coworkers, which is not good, but at the same time, it's not a bad thing because for the most part, I stick my headphones on, throw on some music, and I start coding. Just program, 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 program. And that's what I want to do. I want to be lost in the code all day long, you know? And when I get a question or when I get a phone call, it's like hitting a brick wall. It's just the most agonizing thing in the world. And even when it's my boss calling to ask me how a project's going or where I'm at with certain things, it's just this screeching 
absolute destructive halt. Because I, I can't remember what I was doing afterwards. I, I literally have to, like, after whatever interrupted me goes away, like, after my boss gets off the phone, go away. No. Um, that thing that... Where'd my base go? Oh, I'm at the, the other side. <sighs> I'm not used to that. At least I got on the boat. I mean, that, that was kind of cool. Um, it, I'm not used to not talking to people because I'm so busy. You know? And it's it's not like I'm busy busy, but I get one interruption and it's just such um, such an interruption. I didn't realize how bad it was for me to get interrupted during a a thing. Can we turn that off? Oh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. That is some light. Goodness gracious. That just, that lights it right up, doesn't it? Wow. Okay. Um, I guess we should do another one right here, right? Just like in a little accent wall. Alright, I definitely want one right here above the bathroom. So let's go. Let's go grab one. Boop, 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 boop. Should I go get some ice wood for the for the the mirror? Do we have time? Yeah, I've got like 15 minutes. We should have time to go over there and get a little bit of ice wood for the accent. I mean, if we want to. Um, let's see, rotate, rotate. Okay, hold on. Rotate. There we go. Looks a little awkward like that, doesn't it? Hmm. I wonder if there's any way to hide this. Oh, wait a second. I bet I could hide this. Hold on. Okay. Ooh, yeah, I can hide it. <laughs> That's going to be kind of cool. Okay. Okay. I have to I have to reload though. So Let's see. I should probably stand right here. Menu Load, base three, reload slot. Okay. All right, hold on. Okay, I'm about to reload. I actually had to hit cancel on the load and, cause it wasn't letting me put it on this plot and I'm standing right where I need to go. So let's jump, jump, jump. All right, all right, all right, all right stop, stop. Uh, no, no, uh, move. B. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop. No load successful. Dang it. Okay. We need to do it again. All right, I'll show you how I did it. Let's see. Um, go to menu. Go to load. Current slot. Load. Current slot. What? What do you mean, false? Load. Let's do a different slot. Can we not load? Am I loading too fast? <sighs> yep, I'm loading too fast. Hold tight. Actually, wait. Would this work if I move this down inside here? And then I did like a turn turn? Like that? Can I do that? Ooh, that might work. Hold up. We need it right here, though, right? That's not right on the edge. Ooh, 
Oh, snap. Look at that. Oh, that is... <laughs> oh, that's tight. That's tight. Oh, man. And that, that provides, like, a whole lot of light. I thought I thought I was gonna have to go and move some stuff around, but no, that works. Very cool. Oh my goodness! Now the the hole downstairs is just lit up. That's lit. <laughs> wow. Maybe we could do something with this wall here. I almost feel like I could put a switch on the inside of this wall. And maybe, or may, could we put a switch and the light on the inside of the wall? I mean, I wanna have a way of turning them off. Like it would, it would kinda suck not to be able to turn it on and off. Does this light up upstairs too? I bet it does. Oh, <gasps> it does. Oh, well, kinda. Didn't really cast as much shadow as I thought it was going to. Hmm. Well. <sighs> and these don't actually sleep, do they? Can, can we not sleep in the bed? Yeah, no sleep in the bed. No sleep. I sleep on couch. There we go. Oh no, I knocked down my little coaster. Okay, okay. Um, what else was I doing? Um, let's go up here. Let's go ahead and let's lay out this room right here. We're gonna go smooth wall, turn, rotate like that. One, two. I'm gonna wanna have two spaces because I'm gonna have double doors here. Double door. Let's go to the doors. Ooh, can I do a fat door? Oh, the fat door is just one short. Dang it. That means the double doors too short, aren't they? Yeah, they're one short. That's okay. We'll we'll move this over here like that. And this like that. And then we'll just add in, like, um, where is it? The smooth wall. Because we, we had to do the same thing on the other side, too. So, come on. Right there. Perfect. Uh, since we already have the door material up here, go ahead and make the door material. Boom. And one more. 23 minutes, oh my goodness. I can't believe we ran all the way over there to the, uh, the Savannah, the, 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 the tropics. Um, wait, where's cherry wood? Do I not have cherry wood? <gasps> I'm all out of cherry wood. Dang it. There's always a catch. Okay, go ahead and drop off the switches. Go get some cherry wood. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do. There's a cherry. Tree up the hill, now I'm gonna get it. A lot of people like playing Roblox for its simplicity, but I've noticed lately of like some of the games have been getting smack talked on. Like because of the simplicity. And I understand that Roblox isn't like high tech in stuff but the games are still fun and what makes it even better is these games are not developed by huge corporations they're developed by you the viewer the watcher the player the game designer not big huge corporations but there are a couple of devs a couple of um, people who have created dev companies based on creating Roblox games. I think that's wonderful. 
I think that's amazing and awesome and I encourage you. The stereo was uh, an amazing like leap in that direction. Now I'm, I'm pretty sure that there have been other companies to do that, but not to the scale I think they did it to, you know? I know there's development groups and stuff, but it's weird because I don't feel like they're ever taken seriously. I don't feel like the whole gaming community takes Roblox seriously as a whole, which kind of makes me sad because it, it very is. This is game development. Like if you can program a Roblox game, you've got something and you've got something amazing. Don't ever think that just because it's been written in Roblox that it doesn't qualify as a, a true game. Um, a lot of game devs have complained about uh, Roblox taking percentages of profits. Now, with that being said, I'm going to vouch for Roblox. Because one thing you don't have to worry about is the multiplayer aspect. Maintaining the server. Maintaining the connections to the server. Maintaining the authentications to the server. Like, that's all taken care of it for you. Roblox has done that. They've laid groundwork for you to just worry about the game. You don't have to worry about, like, uptime. Well, okay, you do have to worry about uptime, but, like, if Roblox goes down... What is that? What is that? What was that? Did you guys see that? Okay. I think my remote session to like my work computer idled out or something like that. That was weird. Oh, and my work computer and my personal computer are completely separated. Separated. What in the world? What is going on here? That is crazy. I'm being hacked. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. <laughs> Headline news, Code Primate, famous Roblox gamer and developer, hacked in the middle of video. No, that, that wouldn't even be headline news worthy. <sighs> I hope I never make the headlines, because usually when you hit the headlines, that means something tragic or extreme has happened, you know? I, I don't want anything tragic or extreme happening to me. I just, I just want to play video games and have fun, hang out with my kids, kiss my wife, mm. kiss my wife multiple times. Mm. <laughs> She'd be like, "Stop it! You're embarrassing me." <clears throat> what? Come on, puck her up. Mwah. She'd be like, "Stop!" In the middle of subway. Yeah, so the kids are watching. Oh, oh, right, right. <sighs> oh, um, we just celebrated our, oh gosh, 16th, I think 16, 16 years. Wow. 16th anniversary on uh, Valentine's Day. I don't know if I said that or not. Or if I told you guys, but I've been married to the same woman for 17, or yeah, I've been with the, the same woman for 17 years because we dated for about a year before we got married. And that's kind of strange to me because the only person who, wait, actually... Yeah, yeah. She is the only person that I have lived with longer than any other person in the world. Even, well, nope, nope, that's wrong. That's wrong. Because <sighs> if we've been married for 16 years, I've known her for 17 years, 
then that means in three years, because I went to the Marine Corps when I was 18. In three years, she will have been in my life longer than my mom was. That's, that's crazy to think about. That's a long time. A lot of you guys are like, oh, I can't wait to graduate high school. Or, oh man, I can't wait to get to high school. And I just, I remember that feeling of like school takes forever. Why does it take so long for school? Jeez, just let me, let me end college and I'll, I'll go do something awesome with my life. I'll play video games and make things. I remember, and don't take this the wrong way because I was there. You're stupid. <laughs> There's no way that is a long time. That is a, a blip in your lifetime. That is the smallest minute thing. Because even though it feels like it's taken forever, I promise it's going to fly by. Your senior year is going to get there and you're going to be in your gown getting ready to graduate going, what am I going to do now? And you might have plans. You might have scholarships. You might have things. You might jump straight into the workforce. Who knows? But what I do know is take this time, take today to be very special and take the time to enjoy those around you. Whether it's your brothers and your sisters, your mom, your dad, your son or your daughter, take the time right now to say, thank you. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for being here. And I love you because it's, it's always over in the blink of an eye. And I want video games at my funeral. <laughs> I, I want everybody to have a handheld or a switch or some kind of like Nintendo, you know? And I don't want it to be a sad time. I want it to be a celebration. I want it to be uh, a celebration of my life, not a tragic sudden ending of my life or like the sadness of my life. And I know that sounds a bit weird to like bring out of the ordinary, but it, it's true. Like at my funeral, I want to have like a little party and you can wear black if you want to, but I encourage you not to. I, in fact, I encourage you not to dress up. I want you to be casual. I want you to wear something comfortable. Something that if you have to go and stand in the graveyard while they're reading off the eulogy or whatnot as they're like putting the coffin down in the ground, I want you to be comfortable. Like, and you know how they just do the one little tent and it's a, like a bright sunny day and then like half the people are standing outside? I don't want that. I want it like a big tent with like a little reception, some band playing in the side, some kind of techno music, maybe a DJ, and like a little video playing of like what happened in my life and stuff like that, you know? And you can be sad for me, but enjoy the time that I was here. This could be like a last will and testament, right? I mean, it's not, it's not. I don't plan on going anywhere. In fact, if my quest for immortality doesn't work out, this is how I'd want the funeral to be. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not immortal. I'm not seeking immortality, but I hope, I hope you've had a good time today and I hope you have an even better day after it's over. Because right now, I have to say thank you everyone for watching this episode of Lumber Tycoon 2 with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end of the videos like a, a good YouTuber does. But you don't have to. It's your choice to do so. And it's always been. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. And we'll talk to you soon. <sighs> I'm going to go learn some more. Because I, I want to learn some more Unity. <sighs> Outro, outro, outro. Some people ask me, how do you do that voice? Well, it's kind of like this. I'm not actually using my vocal cords. I'm using a rumble. Test, test. <laughs> outro.
want some new merch, check out teespring.com. Outro.